So if you're looking to understand the Steel Series Rival 3 a little bit more, then you come to the right place because we're going to be taking this thing to bits, literally. And I'm going to show you every single component it uses. This will help you also put it back together or take it apart if you need to. And it'll also just help you understand how Steel Series built this mouse. So hi, I'm Bearded Barb. I've been around for 35 years. And during this time, I've been checking out mice, keyboards, all gaming peripherals, reviewing them, modding them. You name it, I've done it. So if you want to get a competitive edge over your rivals from someone who's been around for decades, and you've definitely come to the right place. So as I said, we're going to take apart this Rival 3. We're going to be using a few little tools, and we're going to strip it down into every little component, then lay it out on a pad, and you can take a look at it, and I'll weigh each component, and we'll take a look and see how well it's built as well, and give my opinion on it as we go throughout. This was filmed on Twitch, which is Betty Bob Twitch TV. So if you want to watch it live, that's the place to check me out. Now let's get on with the video. Not the best at coming off either. Doing a bit of sticky residue. It's like we've got four screws as well. Take the last one off. Steel Series branded switches, but I'm assuming they're on wrong. Right, let's take this cable out first. Well, it's got a small JST connection, that's for a start. Smaller version, it's not the same as normal size ones to make life awkward. Got a pretty uh, PCB, give them that. You've got one, two, three, four screws. Small one. See what it weighs with no cable. The true weight. Yeah, about right then, 77. So it's got one massive diffuser. That's got a long uh, spindle, can't really call them that. Long spindle. It's got a long gap, big gap on the uh, front there between the switch and the piece of the encoder. That's a long spool, spool is it? I can't remember what we call them. Change the ring. Dead on a gram. Got a lot on this PCB, haven't they? All the RGB light. Looks a little bit big and quite a wide gap at the front. That's anything I've noticed. Maybe to help with the flare. I don't know. Seems pretty standard weight. About 100. 
Not sure anyone's going to want to change this PCB into anything, but you could always put some else in there, I guess. Just an idea. Quite a thick PCB. Can't tell what the encoder is. It looks like it's like a 7mm, maybe. Maybe a 9. We'll have to have a look. Got the uh, easy. I see the diffuser is nice and easy to take away. What concerns me though is you can end up with that. It's that little gap just runs inside there, like most of them. One of the sacrifices for taking out the diffuser. Anyway, four grams, I reckon. It's quite a beast. Only double what I thought. Four grams is too many. <laughs> oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> seven, seven grams of RGB. Usual uh, diffuser thing. Gram that half. Oof, closer. That's where there's no buttons under this. This base feels quite light actually. And you go eight grams for the base. We'll take the label off there first. Three screws, one, a two, a three. Same screws we've already taken out. Mm, okay, it's got kale grey shell black dots. Not sure I've seen them before. One with a spacer underneath it. I think we get these spaces from. I've got a weird, weird post at the back as well. Come back. A little bit awkward to change. DPI is a kale grey. This is unusual. They've got one screw in each button and then one in the DPI. So it clips. Thank you. 